is on its own itself. So I'm going to be using as much of this as I can, just to kind of uh, use everything that we have so we don't make any phone number go to waste. So you'll probably see in all of these as well, all of these pieces here, after we've cut something up, if we feel like it can be used for something else, all of this will be turned into something. All of these slabs here are used for the ultra marathon that happens next year. So we'll be making 300 cookies a bit for them for that as well. And then little pieces like this here will just be used for like smaller toggles on a necklace or something like that. But I'll just draw up a quick design, a quick cookie here. So it's a pretty basic shape. It's the first design you'll learn as a carver as well, because it will teach you all the basics of carving. But here I've just penciled out a, just a simple rectangle line there. Then I will use our markers here just so it's more permanent, just because you'll probably see there's a lot of water running on every single piece of tools. You don't want the pencil to just wash off. Let me just mark this out real quick so you can see. Here is our basic design of a tuki, just a simple nice rectangle shape here and I've just added in two little curved marks here that will be the, the end blade of the piece itself. So we'll jump straight into it here. The machines can get quite loud so if you guys are not prone to loud noises there's some little earplugs at the back there. It should be fine, it's not too bad. I should put these glasses on so no chips come flying at me. Now this machine here is our trim saw. So this is where we'll just cut out the basic designs here. You probably won't see because I'll be standing here, but feel free to come to the coast or come around this side as well.
which you'll probably see out there on the second half of the tour. So just round it off the top. The back we do usually keep quite flat, just because that's going to be sitting on your on your chest as well when you do wear it. And then we'll just kind of round off the top piece as well, just so when you do bind it, the rope kind of sits there nice and flat. So after this process here, you'll probably see if I dry it off, it's still quite scratched up from that grinder itself. And you do get quite wet when you can't <laughs> use it. See, you see there's still quite a lot of scratches on that outside edge. Yeah. You see that there. So this is where we'll take it through to our, our grind. It doesn't really do much to the stone. Just stop it's just for the, the yeah, it's just for the tools to kind of cool it down just because it's running quite quite fast and quite constantly. And when you're carving as well, it just kind of gets rid of all that dust yeah. as well when it's kind of spraying up to you. You don't want to breathe in that dust, it's quite dangerous for you. This one's a lot more quieter, so feel free to ask me some questions if you need to. So I'll do half of the tuki so you can see kind of what half looks like and what's, mm -hmm. what's on the outside. and smooth now you've still got those kind of rough pull marks there as well so i'll do that all around the tuki even on the blade itself as well and after that we'll take it to our table so we do most of our part here just get the sauce to it here yeah. and sand it up now so you can see that's a lot more smoother a lot less uh, scratch lines on it as well you'll still see a few here and there it will be very faint but this is where we'll take it through to our tables over here I was using on that machine over there and we'll just use this to kind of hand sand off out all those kind of straight line marks so I'll do a lot of circular motion to get rid of those we'll sit here you don't even really need to have much water on it just because they're all kind of just sanding away I'm just going to buff out all of those last minute little marks that you see there. Now a lot of the time you can do it just by seeing the marks itself. But I like to do it just by kind of feeling it. You can feel how smooth it is compared to the previous process. Just sit here and just kind of save it away. And they're all different types of grit as well. You see how this one's a lot more smoother than the others, where this one's a lot more kind of grittier. This one here I'm going to be using to make the hole itself. Those will be similar tools that dentists use as well, so if you're not if you're used to that sound, it can get quite uh, distracting over time. So we usually just eye out where the hole would be. If you've done it quite a lot, you'll kind of just feel where it is. I'll just make a mark right here in the middle. So you don't really need to apply much pressure as well when you're using these tools. This is the spinning of the drill bit itself will kind of just bite through the stone itself. And if you do apply quite a lot of pressure, you'll probably blunt the tools quite quickly. So you don't really want to do that.
sneezy. That's pretty much all the carving process done for a tuki. It's quite simple. Once you've mastered that, you'll pretty much be able to move on to any other design. You'll then add in little kind of uh, designs on the top as well, little surface edges. And then you can move on to uh, hooks or manayas or korus, all those different designs that you'll probably see out in the store there. So there is one final step before we actually bind these up and put them on for sale. So once I dry this off, it's still quite rough. There's still a little bit of marks here and there from that sanding process. So you see there, it's still quite dry. So back in the days, the Māori used to use their body oils to kind of give it that natural polish and it'll soak into the stone and it will give that matte finish to the stone itself. But today we don't really like to wipe all the stones on our faces or on our hair. So we have some paraffin wax in this little fry pan. sitting in there for some time it does get quite hot so I'll just give you guys a quick look at this because you can hold this quite through in your hand. So there we go that's like the final finish there of a tuki. It's actually not too hot and you pass it around to the field core that we have here. I feel that it's quite sticky so all of our cores are all waxed and we'll bind that up and then that will be ready to go up to the store for that piece to find its owner. Do you guys have any questions at all at this point? On some more, I'd say like uh, the tooth designs mm -hmm. and then putting more different designs on top of it to as well. So we're getting there, but it's a fun process. I love it, love waking up and not having to go, oh, it's going to be today. <laughs> it is a nice feeling. Yeah, if you guys don't have any other questions, I'll hand you. Oh yes, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.